Hi and welcome back. My name is Dr. Forrester Dean, chiropractic, sports medicine, and physiotherapist. Today we're going to be working on the kneeling series of the Swiss ball stretches. So remember we have two choices, the small 45 centimeter ball or the 55 centimeter ball. And like I've said before, I think this ball is a little bit overinflated. We're going to start with the larger ball. And then I know I've mentioned this before. Um, when you buy the ball, it's they're kind of sized by height. And I don't really think that you necessarily need to do that. I find use for a larger ball. I even have a ball that's 75 centimeters. And they actually make these up to six feet across. You can imagine how big that is. Um, so just. I would have a variety of sizes handy. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So I've got my mat here. You could use a pillow. You could roll up a beach towel or something else. First one we're gonna do is the rollout. So we're definitely gonna need the pad for this one or something to kneel on. So we're gonna start in a nice, tall, lengthened position. So I want you to put your hands somewhere on top of the ball and I want you to press down into the ball to lengthen your spine, lengthen upwards, right? This is part of the preparation. And then I want you to make sure your knees are comfortable on the ball. Here's a little trick. If your knees are bugging you, you can actually let your kneecap float off the front of the pad and you're just on your shin and that's a little less pressure directly on the knee um, but if you're going to do this, it just requires a little more stability. Okay. All right. So fingertips on top of the ball. We're going to get nice and long and tall. The backs of the feet are pointing down, point your toes back. And then we're going to start to look forward, gaze forward and elongate. Okay. Now notice I'm keeping my hips over my knees. So I'm not leaning forward and I'm not sitting down. So once you get this alignment, just keep this alignment and you're going to start to pitch forward with a flat back and then inhale, roll up, exhale, roll out, inhale, roll up, exhale, roll out, keep your shoulders low, away from your ears, breath in to get tall. Exhale, draw your belly in and push away. Inhale, exhale. So I'm keeping my gaze nice and high. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. A couple more. Inhale, exhale, draw in the belly. And then last one and exhale. So you notice I stop sort of in this flat back position here. Okay. So you, what you want to avoid is, you know, cramming your body all the way down here. Like this is not the stretch. Okay. So make sure you stay pretty, pretty high up on that one. Now, Variations, everybody likes variations. So the rollout can also be done with one hand. So I'm gonna put my hand on my hip. I'm gonna roll out. Now watch this. I'm gonna roll across the midline. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, and exhale, okay? Now remember in the previous videos how we said if you stretch or bend one side, you need to go in the middle before you go to the other side. So that's not true in this particular drill. So we can go right away to the other side, hand on the hip, and we're gonna press away, exhale. Inhale, because my spine's pretty straight. I'm kind of getting a little bit of a lat stretch, I would say. Exhale, 
Inhale. And exhale. Okay, so I think we did like maybe five and five or five, five and six, I wasn't counting. So I just wanted to show you that there's a variation on the rollout. Okay, next we're gonna be going to the chest press. So let's start again with the big ball. And what I want you to do is go ahead and set your hand down. And we're gonna be in that same alignment where the hip is over the knee. And we're gonna put the thumb on the ball and the thumb is going to be pointing down. Keep your elbow pointed high, take a big breath in, and exhale, start to bring your shoulder towards your thumb. <sighs> Inhale, press up. Exhale. <sighs> so remember, we're not trying to push to the floor. <sighs> now this one's a little hard, I must say, to look up, right? So I'm looking forward of the ball. I'm not just letting my head hang loose. Now let's try a little something special feature. Inhale longer, exhale longer. Inhale longer, exhale longer. Now, just because I'm breathing in longer and exhale longer doesn't mean I'm going deeper into the stretch. I'm just moving more slowly into the stretch. Good. All right, let's try the other side. So I'm just going to move the ball over to the other side. Hips above the knee. I'm going to point my thumb down, open up the fingers. Elbow's going to go up. Take a big breath in. Exhale. So notice I'm bending my other arm that's on the floor in order to get my shoulder closer to my thumb. Okay, so I feel this like in my chest muscle area. A little bit in the shoulder. So notice I'm not going straight down. I'm aiming towards the ball. A couple more. Extending the breath. Inhale. Exhale. Yeah, okay. So the next one we're gonna do is going to be the nerve floss or the arm nerve floss. So what I'm gonna do is kneel on the pad. I'm gonna turn my hand upside down. I'm gonna make a V shape and I'm gonna curl these fingers in like this, make a V. And I'm gonna take the V and put it on the top of the ball, but a little bit close to me, not on the tippy top. I'm gonna come into that same sort of quadruped position and then I'm gonna press the ball away. And I'm gonna press the ball away and start to just gently drop my shoulders towards the floor. Now I start to feel it here. So what I'm gonna do is just pulse out and exhale. And I still feel it there. So what's this doing? is stretching the nerves in the arm called flossing and it does not really feel super great but it has a great effect if you can kind of put up with it let's do two more so notice i'm not letting the ball roll i'm keeping my hand pinned up on the top and i'm keeping the ball really still Okay, so let's go ahead and swing over to the other side. So I'm gonna make that V shape with my fingers curled around. I'm gonna place that on top of the ball. I'm gonna push that away, come into that quadruped position. 
and then I'm gonna make sure you keep your fingers tight, and then I'm gonna bend down. Wow, this side is so much tighter. Breath in, exhale. So remember, I'm trying to push my shoulder down to the floor on that arm that's over the ball. Breath in. I'm starting to make a little progress. Two more. Last one. Good. All right. And then we're going to come up and come out of that. And then I just, let's just kind of check in. Like, how does your, how does your arm feel? It might feel like some people say it feel a little longer or it feels a little looser. Okay. Uh, next one is going to be the hip opener. Um, in addition to side ball dive might be my favorite. Okay. So let's go ahead and turn the mat. So I can take a nice wide stance. Now I'm going to start on this. I'm going to step with this side so that you can see I'm stretching this side. So I'm going to step up and it's a pretty generous step. You can see here. Okay. Now, we're not used, we're not, the ball's a prop, okay? So we mentioned that in the workshop. So I'm not gonna lay on it, I'm not gonna lean on it, I'm not gonna push on it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna launch it out here and touch so that I have a nice triangle of stability here, the hand, the foot, the knee, okay? And then I'm gonna shine my heart forward, my chest, I'm gonna keep my gaze up, and then I'm gonna gently start to sink into the hip like that okay now that's kind of the end so i'm going to back out of it a little bit <sighs> inhale exhale and relax your shoulders <sighs> and just have the lightest touch on the ball it's just a prop And then make sure that you have light touch here too. Now, if you notice you're kind of losing your balance, you might want to move your knee more to the side so you have a wider foot base. Now I can really get down there. So I, I do a lot of these stretches. I think we do about 18 of them in the uh, yoga flow that I teach, 18 on each side. And so I teach that class twice a night. So I get lots and lots and lots of this. Okay, I lost track. So let's do one more. Okay, now I'm gonna stay facing this way so that you can see what it looks like on the other side. So I'm not gonna turn around. Okay, so I'm gonna step up generous step now what I was saying before is if your foot and your knee are in a straight line you're gonna have some trouble with balance so you can just heel toe walk that over to the edge hand on top of the knee of course first thing you want to do is get tall and then we're gonna to start to lean in just like this light touch now I kind of tend to tell people I want you to come into a back bend and that kind of helps them remember not to lean down. Big breath in. Exhale. Keep the chin and the gaze high. Inhale. Tall spine. Exhale, sink your hips. But when you sink your hips, I want you to stay tall. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, draw in the belly. Helps to stabilize the spine. Couple more, breath in. Exhale. One more, breath in. And exhale. 
Now I'm just gonna show you a variation. I'm just gonna show you um, once on this side, okay? So you can take the ball around the corner here, put it under the other hand. I'm gonna come into a bit of a twist. I'm gonna press up. So this is a bit advanced. And then exhale, and I'm gonna use my hand to steer my leg away. And I'm gonna sink into a nice twist. Okay, so then I would multiply that with the pulses. Okay, just wanted to show you that's a thing if you wanna go ahead and try that for yourself. It's a bit advanced, um, so I'll work on that in a, another video, okay? So the next one we're gonna do is the side hip opener. Okay, so we're gonna start with the ball, let's say on the opposite side, sort of in the front a bit, and then we're gonna step the foot again generously out to the side, and we want knee, heel, toe alignment, you're going to go ahead and take your hand and put it on the front of your knee. Turn your chest to face forward, get nice and tall in the spine, and then gently start to settle to the side, but make sure you don't turn to the side. Keep the chest shining forward and press the knee back as you sink. Big breath in, stay nice and tall in the spine. Exhale, press back. Now, if you take a little look at the ball, I'm rolling the ball backwards as I press the opposite knee backwards, it's kind of opening my chest up and rolling my shoulders back, both left and right. So this is a really intense stretch. Don't feel like you have to really go for it. Breath in to get tall. Exhale, squeeze your belly. Two more. Last one. Good, okay, and then we're gonna switch over to the other side. Ball's a little bit forward. Now you know why the ball's forward, so I can kind of snap it back a little bit. I'm gonna take a generous step over to the side. Hand goes on the inside of the knee, and then right away, I go ahead and square up my chest, shine my heart forward, okay? Press the knee, sink over to the side. Breath in. So sometimes, it's these little cues, these little modifications, like rolling the ball back, that help you achieve a movement or a stretch or a yoga posture or your forehand in tennis, right? Sometimes they're just little tiny modifications that just make things move easier and smoother and kind of get you to your goal a little easier. Let's do two more. Yeah. It's a bit intense. Great. Okay, next one we're going to do is called frog on the ball. So we're going to switch. And I, oops, I like the little guy for frog because it makes it more accessible to me. I don't feel like having my leg way up on the ball is what my body wants. So I'm just gonna park my knee on the ball. I'm gonna come into that quadruped position and I'm just gonna walk myself over just a little bit to start to open up the hips. You can see here, opening up the hips. And then I'm gonna take my knee and I'm gonna press away but I'm not necessarily laying my whole body over to the side. So I'm just rolling the ball out. I'm, I'm definitely moving a little bit to the side, but I'm not making a big goal out of moving to the side. So here's my setup and I've got a good stretch going. So what I'm gonna do now is breath in, exhale. Don't I look like a frog? Ribbit. All I need is the spots and slimy skin. You know, it's not easy being green. <sighs> Big breath in. So this is a lot like the hip opener we did to the side, but the, the angles 
of the alignment of the hip have completely changed. One more. Good, all right. So one could argue, okay, so I was stretching both, right? But one was stationary and one was in motion. And those are two different experiences, right? So yes, you're stretching the whole sling, right? The whole group in that horseshoe. Yes, you're stretching the whole thing. But this experience of being with ground force reaction and this one being open reaction, right? There's it's closed chain, open chain, right? So we're gonna start here and then we're gonna move over a little bit set up the frog and I like a bent knee up here and then we start to press away inhale exhale now I like this one with a long slow breath definitely not being in a hurry Make sure that your gaze is up or forward. And make sure you're in a back bend. Make sure your back isn't in a turtle shell position. Oh, let's do two more. I think I lost count again. I've only been counting repetitions for like 25 years. You'd think I would get it by now. Talk and count. There you go, nice. And then we're gonna come out. Okay, so there are, there are a couple variations of frog on the ball, but I'm just gonna show you the basic one for today. Next one we're gonna do is we're gonna stretch out our quads, okay? So this is a bit of a challenge, but it's definitely a good one. So I'm gonna show you from the side, okay? So kneel on your towel, kneel on your pillow, kneel on your pad, and then go ahead and put your foot up on the ball just like that and then you're going to step the other foot up and I recommend again try to have a wider base try not to be in line try to have a wider base okay so here we go up onto the knee start to press back now some folks are going to get a stretch here right away okay now this is an interesting stretch because the ball's kind of free to go wherever it wants. So at the same time you're stretching a muscle, you're also sort of using those muscles to steer a little bit of stability, okay? Now, if you feel like you just can't stay up, go ahead and use the other ball or you can use a chair or something like that and create a little bit more stability for yourself, okay? Now I'm gonna just push this hip forward and get my stretch. Big breath in, exhale. Big breath in, exhale, press. Good, big breath in. Squeeze your belly, inhale, exhale. Two more. Good, all right, and then we're gonna switch to the other side. So get rid of the helper ball, okay. Step up the other foot. Now this time I'm just gonna show you sort of like free, okay, just out the, out the helper. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my hands here to get tall. And as I exhale to push my hips, I'm gonna come into a little bit of a back bend now. Okay, so big breath in. Exhale, tall. That's intense. But it's doable. Inhale. Exhale. Press the hip. So I'm focusing on this hip. 
pressing forward. Now, I'm not a big fan of aided stretches, but I'm just gonna say, you can put your hand on your hip and you can just press a little more forward if you want. I'm kind of like going into a bit of a meditation. Let's do one more. Good. Okay. So let's say you're one of those people that has really flexible hips. You can use the big ball instead of using the little ball. It's just more challenging. Okay. And most people can't wouldn't be able to do that. All right, thanks for checking in for the kneeling series of the Swiss ball stretches, Dr. Forrester Dean. I will see you again in the next series.